after the destruction of Midian. After the unravelling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organisation has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. So, um, well, welcome. Uh, you all kind of open your eyes, and you're standing in a you're standing in a, a frozen ice cave, um, which is really it, it seems like it should be cold, but you don't feel cold. Um, so, I'll have each of you, if you've got the chat open, uh, each of you make a perception check, and the way you do that is. Uh, you see alphabetical down the uh, down the the character sheet a list of skills, right? And the, uh, so perception is one of them. So you roll a twenty sided die and you add that number to it. And are we waking up in the cave like unaware of how we got there? Uh, yeah. Well, it it it, it doesn't feel like it's abnormal to be here. You you know it's like when you're dreaming you don't okay. you know you don't say say why what am i doing here hmm. um but yeah you see a bunch of strange looking people there's a uh, a lizard type creature and you have a 15 there's some kind of a weird lump on his back that you don't understand uh you see a uh, a bluish looking person with pointy ears that's not super common in the Imagica, uh, in the in the four dominions you're familiar with. So maybe she's from the fifth. Maybe I'm that's bluish. normal there. And you see what looks like a a, a, a human with with uh, bright red hair, uh, mm. wearing kind of uh, robish type clothing. Okay, so now I have to react to that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. I guess I get up and I say. Not again. Uh, okay, what are we doing here? Who are you guys? So, uh, how do we get out of here? Anybody? Are we and, gonna and you hear through? and you hear a, a a voice kind of boom out, and it says, "Do not interfere with the Aboriginal children." Who are the Aboriginal ch children? Or any? Uh, that that that's all it says. Oh man! Whoa! <laughs> oh man! Where did that come from? And and at this point, uh, at this point, you all kind of wake up, and you're not in the uh, you're not in the ice cave anymore. You're you're back home. In this episode, Musette, played by longtime friend of the show Catalina Carita of Little Spark Films, is transferred to Squad Seventy Seven in his order X to meet Cherdovir and uncover the beginning of a cultist plot. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us at the Clive Barker Podcast. In episode 296, we're returning to the Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. Um, so where we last left off, uh, Musette Aya, a seer kind, performed, uh, seer kind performer uh, from the Fugue, transferred to Squad 77, uh, where new landscapes and adventure awaited her. Her first mission was to navigate through the sprawling and unfamiliar city of Isordorex, and pick up the newest agent, uh, Drovo Dovir. Uh, Musette met Drovo and his brother, Chur Dovir, a Uradimek sway worker played by Jose. That's me. And uh, in the library of the Uradimek uh, Arcanum, but they were ambushed by cultists led by Anulianak. Uh, Drovo was captured, and Chur Dovir and Musette barely escaped, 
dodging bandits on their way back. All right, well, welcome to episode 303 of the Clive Barker podcast. Today we return to Jericho Squad 77, our Dungeons and Dragons game set in a Clive Barker world with my co-host, Jose, playing Churdovir. Hello, guys. The Uredimex Sway Worker and Brant Finstad as Jonathan, the Nunciate Seagull Sorcerer. Hello, guys. <laughs> and uh, uh, Lori Bichet as the Demigoddess Priestess Zoe Mason. Howdy. Uh, Catalina Carida as Musette, the seer kind bard. Hi. <laughs> and uh, Joe Monko as Ralph, the Nightbreed Warlock. Oh. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Uh, Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Okay. So last time, the first two members of Squad 77, Musette and Churdovir, looking for help with a plan to rescue Chur's brother, turned to Midian Squad 43. But the squad was late coming, and Musette and Chur were forced to go to them, where they found the squad was in trouble. Uh, many of the squad was killed by a group formerly known as the Sons of the Free, but now going by the name the Aboriginal Children. Uh, when the leader of Squad 43, uh, Fiddler Kustoff, discovered they had been breached, he activated a failsafe, uh, which, after a short time, transported the whole facility to an empty field in the Fugue under the protection of Squad 3 in Liverpool. Uh, now back at the base of Squad 77, Second Dominion Isordorex, in the basement of the store, the 77 Wonders of the Imagica, uh, weary and sore from the previous day's battle, the group is wandering out for breakfast, being prepared by Bentley Witch. This is episode 307 of the Clive Barker podcast, and episode 4 of Jericho Squad 77, our Dungeons & Dragons game set in the Clive Barker world. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination. So, uh, where we last left off... Um, Jericho Squad 77, a disparate group consisting of a Uretimex sway worker, a seer kind bard, a talking nunciate seagull, a priestess daughter of a set, and a nightbreed warlock channeling the power of the divided god Baphomet. Uh, so on the outskirts yeah. of his order X, Squad 77 successfully pulled off their first mission. The rescue of Chertovir's brother Drovo from a warehouse run by Anulianak and his cultist lackeys. Uh, though our group killed everyone involved and accidentally burned down the warehouse in the process, uh, Chur was happy to get his brother, but unhappy at some of Drovo's strange behavior and unnerved by the prophe a prophecy from the Boston Bowl of Drovo killing their leader, Bentley Widget. The group has also begun to suspect the involvement of Drovo's political rival and former member of Squad 77, Cassius Breyer. Cassius! Uh, right. So welcome, this is episode 313 of the Clive Barker Podcast, and we're returning to our D&D game, Jericho Squad 77. Uh, last time on Jericho Squad 77, the squad received an urgent request to head out to Outpost 9 in the Tunisian desert. Gregorius' folly, the pseudo-hell, now seemingly taken over by forces of the Gulfs. Uh, the squad managed to rescue Musette's cousin, Aldrin, uh, fought some shadowy demons on the second level and headed back upstairs to rest. Okay, well, welcome to episode 315 of the Clive Barker podcast and part six of our D&D game, uh, Jericho Squad 77, uh, where we left off the squad investigating a recent demonic infestation from the gulfs in Gregorius's false hell. Uh, they made their way through shadow demons, a gluttonous tentacled beast named Porgus, and escaped the temptations of the lament configuration and now face the door to the fifth level. All right, well, welcome to episode 322 of the Clive Barker podcast and part seven of our D&D game, Jericho Squad 77. Yay. Where we left off, the squad had navigated deep into the fifth level of Gregorius's false hell, now infested with real demons from the gulfs. After a long, hard battle with the undead, uh, Ralph met the mysterious magician he thought was dead from his traveling freak show days, uh, the great Tarval. Uh, he'd wanted to initiate Ralph in the ways of hell magic and drive more people to his traveling carnival, freak show, uh, but Ralph escaped and thought Tarval was dead. Uh, now that Ralph is so close to the gulfs, he has returned and taken Jonathan, the Nunciate Seagull, with him. 
Additionally, the Yattering, who would dog the group for days, uh, Nisqually Flume was killed. Uh, having rested, uh, the group contemplates returning to the fifth level, uh, uh, the fifth level down, the level of anger. Uh, Welcome. This is episode. What episode is this? So oh, 327, I think. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're back to the Jericho Squad 77 game, and the 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 group has uh, has just worked their way through the uh, the violence level and making their way down into fraud uh, of the uh, the false hell created by Gregory it's in, in Clyde Barker's story Down Satan uh, which has been mysteriously infested by real demons instead of uh, instead of nothing which is what was there before All right, well, welcome to uh, Clive Barker Podcast, episode 329. We're returning to our Barker-themed Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. Where we last left the group, they had battled and negotiated their way through the nine levels of Gregorius' false hell, where they became in, uh, which had become infested with real denizens of the gulfs. Uh, Squad 77, uh, Chertovir specifically made a pact with Gaustus, the Ice Devil, uh, blinded and maimed by the mysterious Cassius Briar, wants revenge and needs one more soul before their pet, the giant spider Willem, can return home to the gulfs. Welcome to episode 330 of the Clive Barker podcast. Uh, we're returning to Isordorex in, in our Dungeons & Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. Uh, where we left off, Squad 77 had left Gregorius' false hell, having made a deal to deliver Cassius Briar to hell in pl- in the place of Ralph, with Chertovir putting up his own soul as collateral. Now at the debate of the Reconciled Council, uh, where Chur's brother Drovo seems to be winning uh, with the help of some astute questions from the audience and magical manipulation from Jonathan, uh, Cassius decided it's time for the council to end and eliminate uh, opposing voices. Yeah, so much for strategy, I was like, uh, let's not try to, you know, interfere with the debate. And it's like Jonathan did nothing but interfere with the debate in a really <laughs> right. bad way. Made everything completely worse. 